Hello, I'm Brandon Falk, and I'm going to be reviewing this Agilent U1252B handheld multimeter today. I finally uh, got the urge to get a new multimeter after I started getting sick of my old cheap multimeter that could measure volts and ohms and that's it, which really didn't do me much good. So, finally got this in the mail today, and I'm going to open it up and uh, see what's inside. If, if I can get this, there we go. Ah. So, here's the main deal. The multimeter. Looks pretty nice. We have the cord for charging it, which looks like the standard uh, kind of PC default, I don't know if that has an actual name to it, connector. Fairly long cord. Uh, comes with a Certificate of Calibration, very nice, hang on that. Uh, receipts, we have the Agilent Quick Start Guide. Let's see what's in there later. Uh, some more, more little notes. And look, fancy stickers. I don't, I don't get this, but why does this come with it. I don't know. Oh well. Um, now you can see here's the uh, power pack for plugging in and charging the multimeter. Um, just standard 100 to 240 volts input and 24 volts 2.5 amps output. Which is nice. And we've got the standard probes. So, I also went ahead, and on the side I got the, uh, what, which was this? This is the K-Type Thermo Pro. We'll look at that later. The SMT grabbers, and the fine tip probes. So, there they are. And, so, let's, let's check out this multimeter. Start on the bag, it's really heavy. Feels, feels really, really rugged. Actually, it feels like a brick. Really like that. Um, it's a little plastic shield on the cover here. So we'll go ahead and take that off. But man, this thing compared to this, even though this is like a little plastic thing, it just feels cheap. And well, it is cheap. So this guy looks pretty nice. It's got the tilting bail on the back. Um, it should break, yep, so you can change the angle of it. You can change it from sitting like that to sitting like that, whatever you prefer. Uh, that's pretty nice. You can see the IR ports here on the back, if you can see that. Um, as you can see, made in Malaysia, which, oh well. Um, so, feels pretty nice. Battery's not charged at all, which is kind of a bummer, so I'll have to charge that on the side here. But, it doesn't feel too bad. Anything beats my old one. So, it's got all the mode settings. It looks like the inputs are fairly nice here. And, I guess, in the old, uh, old fashion of... Dave Jones, we'll, we'll take this apart. Well, first let's uh, take off this battery cover here. It's got a little little uh, flathead screw there for unlocking and locking the battery door, which is nice, so you don't bump it off. Battery inside, not connected. Okay, maybe we will be able to test it. So, let's see what we have here. We've got the connector, and then there's the battery. This Power X 300 milliamp hour NIMH rechargeable 9 volt battery. 300 milliamp hours, that's, that's pretty much nothing. So, I guess without further ado, let's, uh, let's take it apart. So, where are all my screwdrivers? There we go. Looks like a standard Phillips screw here. So, 
Warning, to avoid electrical shock, unplug all that stuff. Doesn't matter to us. So it looks like we've got two, two screws here and a screw down here. I don't know if I'm going to need to take up the tilting bell. I highly doubt it. But that should be all unscrewed. And this pops right off. So here we can have a look on the inside. Um, you can see here we have the little uh, metal shielding here. We also have the a new blast shield here, which I don't think I saw in Dave Jones's uh, EV log, so looks like we might have some more shielding here. Uh, that was the teardown of the uh, same one, but the A model, not the B model. That was a little bit older. As you can see, we have the uh, spring contact points here for the um, for the buzzer, and then we have the one contact point here, which goes to the shielding. And there's nothing to see here, as uh, as Dave Jones mentioned in the first one. Well, there's the uh, Two, um, the two infrared sensor, sender and receiver and stuff. And if I remember, in the uh, old model, those were also raised up and looked a little more unstable. So, you might have a new revision here. Um, looks like it's revision 002. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that to focus. Yep, revision 2 of this board. So, maybe there are some better changes. You can see here that there's a, a new little slot here, so we might have some sort of uh, input protection there. So, maybe um, maybe they did change it. Maybe, maybe they even watched his video and noted that he wasn't too pleased with that. So, there's pretty much the uh, board here, some screws going through to the bottom where the connector is. But, uh, not much else here. I just... Show you the back of the board. So let's get the uh, let's get the next part of this board taken off here. Where's my? This should do the trick. Oh. It's a tight screw. Hopefully, I don't strip it. Need a need a bigger screwdriver. Sorry, that should do the trick. Much better. I was worried for a second there. <laughs> Looks like there are six screws um, that go all around here. The uh, case screws I forgot to mention are just into a plastic plastic screw, no metal inserts on those. So, eh, it's not the best, but you see that on almost everything, so I'm not gonna not gonna tear that apart. The soldering looks looks pretty good on here. Can't find uh, can't really find any thing to complain about yet. Should be the last screw. There are metal inserts on the actual board here, but that's also uh, probably for conducting a little bit as they're probably going to use this um, for shielding. So let's see, let's see how easy this comes up. I don't know if I missed anything. I'm going to be cautious. Ah, there we go. We've got uh, headers that connect everything. I don't know why this uh, board doesn't want to come off down there. Looks like those input terminals might... Oh, there we go. So here we can see the other side of the board, and it looks like it's... Looks like it's changed quite a bit since uh, since Dave Jones looked at this. Um, you've got the standard headers here for connecting with the uh, bottom side of the board here. We'll go through that a little bit later. Um, 
but we have the two main uh, fuses, the 440 milliamp and the 11 milliamp, and uh, got some input protection here, and there's the uh, resistor, <clears throat> standing up still, but no one, no one really gets by that. Um, it looks like we have a whole new, uh, whole new uh, current. Uh, I'm spacing on what it's called. The uh, I'll put a little note on it. But look at look how this is. Can is a current shunt. It looks completely different than any any other one I've ever seen before. So it like looks like a little square wave. It's pretty neat looking. I don't know if that's uh, better or or what. Um, as you can see, right in front of that uh, current shunt, we have that resistor that's standing up on the little uh, on the on the little stand. So I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of that because it's like going over some other components, but they probably have a reason. Um, but it looks like that slot there might just happen to be some input protection. Or, uh, High voltage protection on there. That is the that is the voltage input. So it looks like they have finally uh, changed that a bit. It doesn't extend through the board, but that's okay because that's that's ground. I'm not going to worry too much. But that's that's pretty good there. They uh, they added that in there. I'm proud of them for that. But as you can see, there's the normal um this is the normal circuitry there. We have some uh, memory. I'm not, I'm not too good with all these. Like Dave Jones says I don't have the experience, but we do have uh, metal capacitors here, which I I really like those. But we do have one one weird transistor here, but that's that's okay. I'm probably using it. There and another one here. Um, but but that that looks pretty good there. It uh, and there's this board right here. We'll try and get that off. I don't. I don't know if it's gonna wanna come off. Maybe it's held in just by headers, or it's probably soldered in there. Oh, looks like it's just some headers. So I'll be able to get this off, given a lot of wiggling. Just want to be extra, extra cautious here. That's uh, no way to really get at it back here. So. I got the top headers out. There's the bottom and the side. That's really weird how they do this. They have uh, all these little headers on the sides. As you can see, there's three different header groups that connect with the headers here. But there's just some more uh, more circuitry here. The layout looks fine to me. I'm not I'm not a design engineer, so I can't can't tell you if it if it's bad or not. But that's what we have. That's what we have there. Looks like some. Uh, Standard uh, discrete, discrete components, and I can't really complain there. Um, this must be the central processor here. They put it in this whole little uh, section with a heatsink, but it's all soldered down. I'm not, I'm not gonna go through the hassle of taking that apart. So I'm assuming it's just the same. It's probably just the same. Um, uh, same chip they used on the old one, but. Uh, there's, there's the board, but uh, it looks like they've really made some changes here. Looks like it's changed for the better. So, we're gonna have to get this board off here. Some thunder outside. So, we will see how this board comes off. Right here, which is where the uh, this board here. And there's a uh, this is where everything. And this is where the battery connects. We have the standard little uh, dial there, not too fancy there. We have a very big crystal there, not some small crystal, which is interesting. We'll flip it over and lose a lose a screw or two. But um, there we go. We just have the. Uh, Little, um, just a little more circuitry here must be, uh, I don't know if that's all for controlling the screen, probably not. Uh, looks like there might be, 
Oh, there's really nothing under under the screen for controlling it. So that must be driving the screen. We've got two caps. One's a one's a little bit crooked, but uh, not gonna lose sleep over that. But so uh, looks like a pretty good board here. We'll go ahead and put it all back together, I guess. All right, now that everything's put back together, let's uh, put the battery in. If you paid uh, close attention to when I put this back together, you might have noticed that the dial thing I um, had off by one turn from uh, when I put it back in. So <laughs> it is the battery is still uh, flat, which is good. You don't want them shipping charged batteries. So, um, but now we should be able to plug this in and. Start charging. So, there we go. Standby battery. It's got that little little countdown. Okay, so now it's going through a self test here. So, let's uh, let's see what happens. Looks like it, uh, it's a weird. Weird little uh, charging, self-testing still. So it's got makes this little three three bars light up, whatever you wanna whatever you wanna call it. So I guess um oh well I wasn't wasn't expecting some fancy fancy interface sort of deal, but it's uh, looks like it's got the uh, well, timer or something on there. It says a hundred in the corner. I don't know if that's supposed to be one point oh or one minute or a hundred or something. I don't know if the bar on the bottom is supposed to do anything. I haven't been paying enough of a enough attention on it to notice if that's moving. But let's see. So, what I didn't initially notice I uh, that. I had the dial on backwards, so um, I opened up the manual, and as you can see, it's it's really nothing. It came with some cardboard between it to stiffen it up. I, I don't know why why they did that. It's just pretty stupid, but it um, really has no information here. It's a little charging the battery deal, so it, the standby flashes. Mm -hmm. Press uh, press shift to start charging the battery. Recommend not to charge the battery if its capacity is over 90%, which is good. A little function brochure and measuring voltage and AC currents and stuff like that. Performing resistance, conductance, continue, continue. Ah, whatever. I can't. I can't speak. But uh, uh, temperature capacitance square wave output for the B model, so we will have to check that out because we have that. But that. That's it. It really doesn't tell us much, but oh well. So this was beeping at us when I was going through that, so it looks like it says 220 or something, so let's go ahead and press shift. 
Maybe we didn't have to, but it looks like 220 minutes, and uh, this will be charged. So I guess I'll go back and uh, edit this video together, and we'll go through this in a bit. See you later. All right, here we're back to the multimeter. As you can see, there are 92 minutes left on charging the battery, but I really can't go that long without playing with this thing. I've been sitting on my desk at work, and then I brought it home, and I haven't been able to play with it at all for 12 hours now, so I think it's time to start playing with it. So let's just uh, unplug these battery terminal things. And uh, see what happens. So now they're unplugged. Now we'll go to turn it on and we'll see. There we go. And it looks like it works. Ah, this, this is impressive. Oh, you can hear a relay in there. Ah, oh, that sounds awesome. I love that sound of a relay. Alright, so, um, I guess we should start measuring stuff. So, let's first take a look at the probes here. Uh, these are just the standard ones that came with it, but, uh, looks like we have, these are just the connectors. Come on, twist tie. Come on. There we go. Alright. So, Really, really lightweight. Um, really lightweight here. I like, I like that. Nice and uh, good like that. I'm assuming these come right off like that. Okay. We have little protectors, which I like. I haven't seen that. Then again, I haven't used a high-quality multimeter. So let's just put this in the ground, and we'll put this one in the voltage, and we'll um, play around with some voltages. So. Here are the end pieces here. Obviously nothing is connected, but uh, what comes with it, we have, it seems like, uh, three different types of probes. Four, <laughs> two different types of probes, four probes. Um, but one's just a longer and one's, uh, one's not. Let's see if I can get that to work. Yeah. So. We'll go ahead and we'll use the not so long probes. They also came with alligator clips, but not not gonna go through those yet. Or maybe not at all. So let's remove the, that. Plug it in like so. Looks like that should do the trick. Got all these caps I gotta remember to put back on. But now our probes are connected. They're really nice probes. They feel nice. They have yeah, a little bit of grip to them, but much nicer than my old probes. So let's um, let's get some voltage going. All right, we put it all onto the uh, the DC range, and now let's uh, just do some measurements here. So I have standard PC power supply, which I use as a bench supply until finally I get get uh, an up to date one which I'm looking at getting, taking suggestions. I'm probably going to get an Agilent one. I'm a big fan of Agilent stuff, so um, I like to support them. So I'm going to go through, and I'm going to probe this 5-volt uh, um, slot here and see what we get to. So 5.119 volts. So let's uh, take that off and see how quick it out of range is again. Bam. So that's pretty quick. So I have no complaints. Works perfectly. Good. Alright, so let's check out the ohms range. So first of all, I took out the uh, surface mount connectors here. So um, I'll make uh, everything a little bit better to probe. I'm just going to connect those up real quick here. Let's just slide on over the uh, long probe, whatever you want to call it. So I'll just go in like... Uh... Ah, come on. Come on, buddy. There we go. Alright, so now that those are on, we can go and grab a simple resistor. So, this is, it looks like red, blue, yellow. So, 
we'll go on here. We'll connect one of the clips. Now we'll connect the other clip. And we'll see what happens. Voila, look at that. 4.638. Now that's kilo ohms. So that's good. Alright. Resistance works. Alright, so let's check out the diode range here. So I'll switch that onto the diode range. And lo and behold, I have a little red LED here that we're going to test it with. So to connect up, we're using the surface mount connectors once again. It's Sorry, I can't really get this in the camera. But um, here we go. Glows up and all. Look at that, 1.7482 volts. Perfect. Beauty. All right, so now we'll check out the capacitance range with this little uh, 0.47 microfarad capacitor. So I'll we'll switch that over to the capacitor range, and we'll hook it up once again. Surface mount probes. Love these things. It's exactly what I like about these. Let's clip them on. No fuss. Everything's just fine. And look at that. There we go. Point. Well, it should be, uh, it's probably at a different range, 498.3 nanofarads. So there we go. That range works just fine. Like it. So the next thing we can look at here is the shift mode on the capacitor readout, which gives us the temperature mode. So we're going to hook up our temperature probe. I took this out. It's a uh, K-type probe, or maybe, yeah, it should be a K-type probe. So just connect these and plug it in it's all uh, all set up already so there we go and um, still in capacitance mode and it's really confused but we'll hit shift here that puts us right into temperature mode as you can see it's 25 26 degrees Celsius in here if I put it between my fingers and 33.6 or I could uh, quickly turn on my soldering iron here and um, heat that up a bit, and then we'll just get another readout here. Need to weight it all, so uh, it's hard to read that. There we go. 80 degrees Celsius. So, probe works just how I wanted it to. Perfect. Alright, so the next thing I wanted to check out is this magical new feature, which is the function square wave generator. So I've hooked everything up to the probes, uh, to my oscilloscope that is. And as you can see, we have to switch the input terminal as that one is used when we're doing the function generator. And right now we have it set at 600 hertz with a 50% duty cycle. And let's see what the oscilloscope gives us. So, hello, that's me. Right, so we'll go over here. As you can see, nothing but just not on the right range. So I'll auto range it. See what comes up. Beauty. Look at that. 599.995 hertz. Exactly what we thought, right? And it's 50% duty cycle. You can zoom in and it's really not a too bad rise or fall. So, no, too far. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back here to the multimeter and we're going to increase the frequency here. 800, 1200, 1600, 2400, 4800. It's the highest we can go. Let's check it out. Look at that. 4.7996 kilohertz. Perfect. So, let's bring the frequency back down to 600 and let's change the duty cycle. Let's bring the duty cycle up to 75%. This takes a while. I don't think you can hold it down. Oh, you can! Look, learn something new. So we'll go down, 75% exactly, and we'll look at the scope. Look at that, 599.995. It's really hard, sorry, I'm out of cord length here, so I can't get too close in scope. But, look at that, there we go, there's our 75% duty cycle at roughly 600 hertz. Works like a charm. Finally, let's check out the continuity tester. Let's do the little hit. Not very good, but, you know, it's it's not terrible. It, it should do the trick. 
You know, how, how few times are you really tapping components, you know? It, it gives you enough time, so I'm not going to complain about it. It's a bit slow, it could be faster, but... Oh well, what can I say? It does work, and it's quick enough for practice. And the last few things I want to look at before I head off is uh, things like the dual display, so we can put that on and it goes into, uh, shows hertz there up top, you can get voltage up top, you can get voltage that's DC up top, you can get uh, built-in temperature, and then there's off, and it also varies, so like if you go on the capacitance range, um, you only get the temperature and that's it. So, um, on this you only get, well yeah, obviously that's, that's going to be like that. But, um, yeah, I can't, I can't really say much else. Um, there's the min-max feature, so if we hold this button, it goes into min-max mode. So now it's, has a little counter up top, and it's telling us how long it's been calculating stuff. I think it beeps every time it gets a new record, I'm not quite sure. But now if we uh, hit this, now it's showing us our max voltage is 14.381 millivolts, min voltage is negative 19.074 millivolts, and the average uh, 0 0.006 millivolts. So that's a really nice, easy to use uh, function. So yeah, I like it. So, all in all, I would say that if you want a really uh, high precision, uh, good precision per um, per dollar that you spend, I would highly recommend getting one of these. I, I really had no issues with it. I, I went through it, opened it up. I mean, as you saw, I, you know, it's rugged, it's durable. I mean, it's not going to be waterproof. I wouldn't suggest it for fuel use, even though it feels like a brick. But, you know, there are better meters out there that are more time tested for that, you know, like get yourself a fluke or something if you if you really want to bang it around. But if if you have something that just sits on your bench and you want it to be high accuracy, high pre precision, and you don't want to go out and buy a bench meter, this is exactly what you want to get. So this also comes in the U one two five three B model, which uses a uh, OLED screen, but the battery life drops about <laughs> a thousand percent from uh, I think. 80 hours on this to uh, 8 hours on the OLED screen. So, yeah, I, I have to doubt again the OLED screen because I like the old school sort of feel to the um, traditional LCD screen. So, honestly, I can't see any reason why you wouldn't want to get this unless you need heavy duty field work or, or what. I mean, it's, it's fine. It looks fun on the inside. I mean, it's a name brand Agilent. I mean, it's. I, I I think Fluke has to watch out. Um, one thing I did forget to mention is um, is the backlight. So there you go, orange backlight. It's actually really nice. I should have used that during the video so you could have seen the readouts a little bit better. Oh well. Well, anyways, I think it's a great product, and I I don't I don't see anything wrong with it. So uh, yeah, I suggest if you're looking for multimeters, I'd suggest this one. Thanks for now. Bye-bye.